Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the UU coverage cast that we do uh, every week. Uh, today, we'll be covering everything that happened in week six. And I have KM and L numbers, also known as Clark, here with me. And I think Adam will join later on. So we will get right to it. Um, and yeah, we have five games, obviously, that happened. We saw a few lineup changes, right, this week? I think this was the first week that uh, HS and uh, highways played in this tournament. Uh, HS was up against uh, Seatum. Is it Seatum or Saitum? How do you say it? I do not know. Sure, yeah, no, I don't know. I, I will now refer to him as Seatum, and I will stick to that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this game felt like it was one sided. Um, yeah. Like yeah. You see this Hydreigon versus like Azu lead matchup, which is really good for Azu. And instead of going tank, he goes to Aegislash. On the knock, which was a little questionable, because Tang is like your dedicated Ozzy check, isn't it? Like on, on most teams, it is. It is to scout at least. Was probably expecting play rest, I guess, but like knock was free. It was like Dragon can do something to AV Ozzy anyway. And early knock is always brainless, yeah. Yeah, but he does get a nice toxic on the Como, which is worth something. Um, but yeah. HS blocks any sort of momentum that he wants to go for. <laughs> It's a Brox, oh. yeah. I mean, Needle Queen's always stuck in these situations, right? Versus Rotom H, I feel like we've seen this a lot of times. Yeah. He just keeps overheating, and he really can't gain any momentum because of the Thundee Needle Queen core to block uh, Volt Switch. Hello, Adam. Hello, guys. <laughs> What's up, Adam? It's your favorite negative player here. What's up? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, we, we were just talking about HS versus Seatum. I missed the oh, HS yeah. talk. Fuck. No, we're, we're HS still going over. One. It's, it's so HS1. Wait, he, he did you guys cover the fact? Did you guys cover the fact that there was a fully defensive Rocky Helmet Tangrowth and Izumaro still catch four mods? Yes, we just went over that. <laughs> just went over that. Well, it happened, just for those who missed it. Yep. Yeah, I feel, I feel like in this game, I mean, like, we said this earlier, but it, I feel like HS just brought the better team. I think we can all yeah. agree on that. Yeah. Um, and he just played it well, like, he was in control most of the time against what is, like, a fairly passive build. And he had ways to limit c momentum, like, Volt Switch wasn't getting through Needle Queen or Thundee. And obviously Hydreigon can't really risk committing to a move with Azu on the other side. Yeah. Because Azu's a threat and a half. Nice double. Yeah, Boom Burst on this Supreme Marina was really good. Yeah. It just it's shows how specs. scary. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was going to say that. It just shows how scary Como can be. That it was so much variety. Yeah, it was choice off Tide Rag on versus Aegis Slash, so he can always scout. Yeah. This I thought was, uh, I don't know if it, hap oh, it happens at the end. But how the Aegis Slash lived uh, Hydreigon Dark Pulse mm -hmm. in sword form, that was something. Like, watch, watching that live, I did not expect that. Right. Honestly, Wait, I didn't uh, either. Oh, but honestly, wow, it did live. Wow. It did. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so true. Apparently, it was not max special attack Hydreigon, which is even more suspect, given its scarf. Wait, is that confirmed? That they weren't max special attack? Well, it's what HS said, and I'm assuming he, I'm assuming he uh, spoke with his opponent. Okay. Yeah, that is a little weird. I don't know if I can get behind that. But yeah, HS did win. He executed well, so props to him. And good on him for getting his first win. Well, the screen size highways won the battle, so yeah. <laughs> I guess that's true for highways. I guess so. All right, next up we have my game versus Askov, which I will skip through for obvious yeah. reasons. Uh, it, it was interesting. Like he had a uh, HO, obviously. Um, the strap. The strap. This trap. This Moltres was a big bra. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was trying to get a Brox, but against uh, dual defog, it's it's hard to keep them up. But we'll see. He had a really cool set pick that. Uh, uh, will honestly, come into play. also, like good building on your part, double defog is ne is necessary on stall, in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like it's always especially best. with spikes being a bit being a thing. Mm-hmm. But like, let me know about like your building process because I see a Garbodor and I am curious. Really cool pick. Thank you, thank you. I assume you know what it's for. I it should yeah, be obvious. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's a big, big but I like it. Conk Elder. Yeah. Because Conk really doesn't want to kill it, which is the big thing. And then it has Corrosive Gas, which functions as like the knock for this team. Item removal, just speeding up games. And it also has spikes. So, it so even though I have double defog, I can also like commit to a more spike stack based approach with Fat. So this was basically my Galar wheezing, just like yours has spikes and mine had defog. Yeah. I mean, it was just like a co uh, con check in the slot, you know? I mean, I had yeah. Mence, but yeah. Mence also has to check other things. Mence this yeah. this turn is pretty big, by the way. Hmm? What was that? The walled by Conkle there too, wasn't it? So you needed the guard butter. No, I, I had air slash on this. Oh, no uh, slash. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So no toxic. Yeah. No toxic on this particular one, yeah. Uh, I, I feel like I wanted air slash just for random Keldeos and such too. Even though that mon's in a pretty bad spot at the moment. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, no yeah this, this turn was pretty good. Uh, pretty big for Askov since he confirms rocks on 26 with Steel Beam. Which was a really cool set pick, but I don't think we've seen that in UU as of yet. Steel Beam, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's that's cool. And then here, since Rocks are up, Moltres can like just go in and he just straight up goes to plus six, which was yeah. good on him. Uh, here I just, I stacked the garbage back, unfortunately. Yeah, I had to Toxic it and then try to pivot around it. Here I go Quag first so I can haze it. And fortunately he doesn't flinch me. If he flinched me over there, I think the game is over. Yes, yeah. But you gotta risk it. He hadn't used many fiery wraths, so odds were in my favor. Oh, wait, 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 like he was double dense on this sort of team. I'm just curious, how much does plus six Moltres do to Chansey? To Chansey? It, it two chaos with these. Yeah, oh yeah, it definitely it, it two chaos. Really he's game. modest, yeah, with Fury Wrath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and here I just sacked, just it. I sacked the Skarm to uh, the BD Azu. And then I, I was out of range of player up, so I could safely yeah, recover. Yeah, he could have chosen to Frozen or Crit, go for that, but... Uh, I avoid it, and he keeps player roughing, and then he's, once he's low, he starts ice punching to try and freeze it. Which is why I go yeah. for the Scald on this turn. Just yeah. to account for that. Yeah. And then Slowbro comes in, Umbreon gets to a KO'd. Uh, he gets the quick draw on the second go, I think? Yeah, and if, and if the show is watching that game, this is where he died a little on the one side in, these, in this sequence. <laughs> Look what I did to my boy! Look what I this sludge wave poison was huge in the late game. Yeah, yeah, that was really big. But I mean, it happens. It's it's a ten percent chance. It, it you know. does. Got to live with it. Yeah, it's and that that was the difference maker in the end because uh, I believe there's one crucial turn that I got the call Wait. wrong on, which we'll fo fast forward to. No, we can uh, skip to the end. Try to have a mince on the Como. On, on the Como. Are you good, Chip? Because yeah. with, with the Quag Poisoned, like, my recoveries were getting burned really quickly. Um, so I had to, like, kind of break that chain and try to get uh, a Roost off with my mints so I could, like, try to claim a KO over there, since I did have Air Slash. Um, I think it was this Wait, turn here, over here. Here you yeah. go, yeah, here. Yeah, here I go mints, and he makes a good play and just stays in clanging skills. And yeah, catches it. and then from here on out, it's just uh, Age of Slash repeatedly pressuring my cor my core over here. And he goes for Iron Head, gets the flinch, which was within odds. I think he Iron Headed it three times or something. Um, yeah. And yeah, the game just ends. Yeah, it was pretty much over. Chances. Yep. So he played well. He played to his outs. Uh, I got a bit unfortunate, but that's just how the game goes. Really, got to live with it. Uh, we have Clark versus IP next, which was a heavily criticized game to say the least. I know there was a lot of uh, talk about this game. Was this so bad? I didn't see any of it. I don't think it was that bad. It was just a Jirachi momento, and then Jirachi makes people mad, so... Yeah. <laughs> that that Tebow was but good. Honestly, just, like, one thing, like, one thing, like, if we pause there, 
Yeah. This is the most IP team I have ever seen. Like, the only thing is missing are Aegis Slash and Tender Cruel. But everything besides that is IP. Like, just well turned. That's basically Indigo Plateau in a nutshell. And that's what this is. Oh, and Scarf Fever is be well, obvious. It's well turned, but a lot of all switch, so it's just turn. It's just turn, turn. That's just same moment momentum with like everything, honestly. You turn, you turn, you turn, you turn, you turn, friend. <laughs> and that's exactly what yeah. we see him doing right here. Yeah. You would turn is broken. Yeah. He, he did have a cool pick on um, Shao, which we'll get to. Yeah, Blaze Kick, Blaze Kick. That was cool. Especially in conjunction with Pre Marina. Mm -hmm. As you're you're tackling the fat grasses to allow Sub CM Pre Marina to do something. Were you sub three attacks, by the way? I don't think you revealed anything else. I was. I was. Yeah, it's a good I was. Set. Yeah. I like it. We saw that in SM a few times, but not so much in SS. But it definitely is a cool pick. Uh, you exchange rocks. I think. Uh, yeah, we'll see that Amoongus turn versus uh, Shadow soon enough. This was big, um, according to most people. The Focus Blast crit on Rachi. Yeah, like, the thing is, why I clicked Focus Blast here is, like, I thought about t building again, but, like, he, I, I did that the first time versus Mandibus. I was just like, okay, I can do it again. But, like, the thing is, the only thing that I really need for Mamo and my Scarf Rachi to, you know, claim a kill every time is chip on that Jirachi. And if I... Like, even get, like, Focus Blast off on this, it's already huge. Uh, Thunderous is, like, it's not a good roll for me, but it is one, and I straight up kill bigger SP, so... Focus mm -hmm. Blast was, like, literally what, what I was like, okay, yeah. Of yeah. course it's, like, hit or miss, but, like, if you hit, you're guaranteed to get progress, so... That's yeah, good. Yeah. The, it was a good move. I think people were mostly complaining about the crit, which kind of sped things up. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. It did tell me a lot. Obviously, like it did speed things up and make it easier for me. Mm. And then there Here, was the turn like, versus the pre marina. You can explain that a bit. I still think I still think that it was always the move here, just because like I lose so much from like going out here because he could just be sub CM and my Amoongus is gone. So I would need to sack like a lot of my resources. I do leave a skull for mask special attack, and um I. It doesn't even kill um, with a burn, and I still get to come into rocks. Mm -hmm. So I did go for my odds here. Um, he could have also just moon blasted, like expecting me to go out and not risk it. But like in my opinion, like if I go out and I play this whole scenario, even like for the second time, like after I flinched him one time already, I just lose so much momentum. And, like, my odds of, like, you know, getting through with all this is just, like, much worse. Because I still have Mammoth Wine as my main win con. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as you deem the risk reward to be good, then I, I think it's justified. I think there's no shame in going for that. And, yeah, this this is why keeping Primarini was big, just because of this scary yeah, breaker. Yeah, he didn't have up. anything, you know, to, like, hit me. And also no resistances anymore, so I could just, you know, uh, trade, mm -hmm. which was, like, important for me. Yeah. Because the man shot was a game's, big problem. The game's over, yeah. Regardless of whether you're yeah, going to flinch you know, I just... Yeah. I could have also yeah. just ice shot at first. Like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of, like, iron head flinches in this game. And, I mean, you kind of just have to roll with that. That's just how Jirachi functions as a Scarfer. Uh, iron head flinches are just part of the game. Or does it? <laughs> or does it? In this case, it does get rocks up as well. But, yeah. That's that's just what Jirachi does. And IP got a bit unlucky, because I think somebody calc it with all those, like, Iron Head flinch chances. It was, like, around 20 Yeah, like, I got, got a lot of them. them. Yeah. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes. You just gotta live with it. Uh, we have Adam's game versus GXC, which was also a little involved in the RNG department. As we'll see. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was wondering if, like, Spore in turn one was your play instead of going hard conk. So, I went hard conk for two reasons. I wanted to activate Flame Orb as soon as possible, just so he can't Spore the conk with his Amoongus. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I heavily, I pretty much expected Amoongus turn one on his end, so I figured I'd catch him with a double and then knock it off in facade and get some, collect my kill with Poppy immediately. 
My biggest regret of this game is not knocking off turn two. I just overlooked eject button as an option. Mm -hmm. Which makes total sense for his team, honestly. Yeah, Because it doesn't yeah. really have like a guaranteed pivot, does it? Yeah. yeah uh, to get King Dragon, mainly. It was a misplay on my part, and it cost me a potential free kill. Here you get rocks up, which is yeah. uh, pretty big. You just pressure him. Here was yeah. another play, I think, that was uh, a bone of contention for some people. Where, Whereas, if I, yeah. I mentioned this, I fucked up. EQ was the best, was the best move available. Um, the mindset was turn into Amoongus and pivot out to get back to 100%. But getting half its damage off right here, right now, would have made Dre a lot bigger threat than it was. Because mm -hmm. with Rocks and Dark Pulse, it's taking around like a fourth every time, isn't it? About a third, actually. A third, okay, yeah. Which is pretty big. Mm -hmm. And then also I get I get some luck in my hand here, the crit into a flinch. Um I think it's a three hit KO either way. So after that second dark pulse should switch out, but rocks would be um, off, which would be better for his Azu, of course. But right. here's where the EQ damage would have come into play. Like Azu would be dead if it took that hit earlier. Yeah, so you see Dark Pulse doing twenty three. It would have been mm -hmm. in a bad spot. Yeah, and here he brings in Thundy again. Uh this uh, was big. Yeah, this sequence was big. Yeah, he I missed mean, the Draco, which was huge enough. And then he, I think he crit poisons oh, the next turn. He crit poisoned after. Yeah. That was like, that was unlucky as fuck. So you get a one, one, uh, straight one for one trade, which could have been uh, a dead Thundee and like a 60% Hydreigon. I also even a 1% Hydreigon is what I needed just because, um, as you saw, I had nothing for a paralyzed Kingdra. And the only, my only option was going for Raji later, but if I just had my Dre, I could Draco it right here and force it out, mm -hmm. and then win with um, Togekiss in the end. Exactly. Or yeah, especially given that Exco is really low, so it doesn't mm -hmm. really function as like a, a Togekiss counter. Yeah. Or check, rather. Mm -hmm. The dichotomy of Serene Grace. Um, yep, the, <laughs> the duality of Serene four, Grace right here. Two out of four with Terra. Yeah, we saw in Clark's game that the success rate is pretty high, but even with Para, it wasn't enough in this game. It's just yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Once you watch watching that, I mean, the game was over. Like, I lost yeah. to Azu. Yeah, and Azu, to be fair, Azu's in a fantastic spot at the moment, and good on whoever brought it. Because I think, I think it's funny. It's so annoying. It's one of the best mods in the tier, in my opinion. Or best breakers, let's put it that way. But yeah, GXC uh, played well, played to his outs. So good on him. And our last game, we have yeah. Highways versus Bush Touch, which was a very fast paced game. Now, entertaining for the spectators, cool. for sure. I like the camel pick from Highways. The first we saw, all tour pretty much. Mm -hmm. Granted, unfortunately, he drew Diggers B, he drew X Control, he drew Azuma World, he drew Moltres, and he drew Como. So five hard checks to win. So I like the checks, yeah. Honestly, uh, Ken, he's such a great ma, and but sometimes you just like look at look at everything. You're just like, wow, it, it actually does get walled by a lot. Yeah. But honestly, Specs overheat still looks great. I, I like it with Azu here with uh, AV in particular. Yeah. It's a good core. Um, we saw the, the dual spore. Also, like, this, which was huge. Uh, can we just talk about like all of these like how stun spore worked? Like, I think he like stun spore two or three times, and it worked. He did, yeah. yeah. Two times really... in a row. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, with a team like Tushes, like you're uh, forced to like be on the aggressive side, yeah, as opposed to playing it was more that right? So team. it was good. It was IP's team, right? With some set changes, yeah. Which yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So the, the double stunts were really paid off for him. Uh, we see the hurricane miss, which I don't think mattered too much since he was AV. But confusion chances, whatever, could have been huge. Um, here he barely yeah, drums up. Knockoff claims are from full, which is why people have been running itemless on some teams. Yeah. Uh, but people have also been running faster mandibus for this exact reason. Just so you outspeed belly drum Azus and Falpu. Which yeah. does enough after uh, you get back up to like 75%-ish because of Citrus. Yeah. And uh, Sleeping Extra Jill is huge here, I mean with Azu. Which really doesn't yeah. have like a good way to counteract it. Brings in Diggersby. Uh, he highway sacks Mandibus, or attempts to at least. Um, it was Swords Dance. It takes it out. Me. In comes uh, Latios. Such a scary mod. This um, was a weird turn because I expected he was trying to catch the 
the Aegislash Slash with Mystical Fire? Uh, this was just at 100% at this point. Uh, because well, like, she was... could chip on Digger Speed for Ozzy, maybe? Guaranteed damage yeah. for Shandy, even. Yeah. 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 Just, it, I feel like it was about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it caught both routes, really, for Bush, which was good on, yeah. on High Wish to see that. And here we Does see the set change. Flame? Yeah, flame. yeah. So, soon enough we'll see the set change that he made on Komo. Um, the AV Azu was hard to get through. Imagine SD here. Imagine SD. <laughs> it could have been tough. Yeah. Yeah, at this point he has to get the call rate. Our weakness possibly could have been sexy there. Sadly it was Life Orb. True, true. Yeah, people have been running Life Orb, I think, more often. Mm -hmm. And yeah, here's pretty much over. I yeah. just confirms his route. Yeah. I, I believe uh, he was he was clanger with uh, close combat over boom burst, which was interesting. Yeah. It really only hits like Chansey, won. right? It boom burst could have won, yeah. yeah, but he did miss the hurricane earlier, which did limit yeah. it. Yeah. But definitely would have yeah. a different game for sure if he had a boom burst over close yeah. combat. I mean, like uh, right in the end game though, like if you just it, he, he jotted the diggers be right, so quick attack and did yeah. boom burst won the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, that, that, was, like, that was like a 50 50 of some sort. Yeah. Yes, it was. Because he didn't know it was Bloom Burst until then. Exactly. Exactly. It definitely would have changed the flow of the game. But Bush did commit to the set pick, and Highways played well on his end. And I think he's he's 1 0 after this, right? That was his debut? Yeah, yeah. yeah that Official was, choice. Yeah. yeah, so good on him for doing that. He's up 1 0 now. Um, as far as trends, I know Lottie was like really low this week, surprisingly. The one or two out of ten, probably, like, not many people have been using it. We saw one in Highways, from Highways' corner, and then, I'm not sure if we saw another one. Uh, perhaps the HS game? I don't know. No, not even. Yeah, so it's just one out of ten. One. Oh, I'm, I'm one out of blind. ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one out of ten, no one wanted to use Laddie anymore. Yeah, but Vladi is getting uh, retested right now. Yeah, uh, which means it, it'll be unavailable for the rest of uh, Snake. Right? I just feel like it was so centralizing that, that, we, that everyone was preparing for it anyway, so I guess that's why no one bothered using it. Right, right. But it's still, it's still great, obviously. It is, it is, yeah. One of the best ones in the tier, easily. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now and that it's, it's really centralizing. Now that it's banned for like these next two weeks, at least, possibly more, mm -hmm. depending on whether it, um, it's voted to stay or not, uh, we'll see a meta shift for sure. Like you can see some mons like uh, Thundy, for example, popping off without like a faster Lottie uh, standing in its way. Um, possibly yeah. some other mons. So these next few weeks will be really interesting to see in terms of trends to see how people adapt. Jesus, finally come back to you, you. Yeah, so so we'll see. These next a few weeks will be cool for sure. Um, and I guess we could cover predictions then for next week. Uh, yeah. First off, we have Seatum versus Askov. And uh, both them. Just both of them. Askov, yeah. I, I don't yeah. think Seatum had a good show last off. week. And Askov is the more proven UU player, so I don't think anybody objects to that. This next yeah. one is pretty fun. Highways versus GXE. Oh, that's an interesting that one. Is, that is a very fun one. I think personally, personally, I would be inclined to choose GXE. Because I think his, Honestly, play, his play was more convincing same. last week. Highways played more of like an even game that came down to a few 50-50s. Which he did get right, mind you, but I think GXE just looked more confident. I think GXE brings brings heat stuff, and he, I think he's dangerous. Yeah, his takes on the meta I like the danger. I like that he brings very, unusual stuff. I like that a lot. Un you, unusual, man. but efficient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I think most of us are in favor. I would go with GX as well. But it's definitely going to be a close one. It will be a close one for sure. This next one, I, I would be terrified if I was at the other That's so weird to think. I'd be very scared. Easiest one in school, easy. Easiest one in his entire career. You think HS Pretty got sweet. it? Oh my god. I, Indigo Plateau is toast. The moment <laughs> that HS found out that he's not playing me this week. Oh man. Honestly, actually, when when I saw you both like text, oh, we're playing next week. I was like, I was just like, should I tell them that I'm actually playing Adam next week, or should I just you know wait for them to find out? I was just like, they're probably just trolling anyway. 
Oh no, we were serious. We're just dumb as fuck. I was just like, okay. <laughs> but mistakes were made. It's okay. Uh, Clark, who would you take Honestly, from between IP and HS? <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I just hope this one is gonna be a banger. Like, I want to see crazy shit from both of these. I yeah. want to see crazy shit. Like, IP, honestly, I know what you're capable of in terms of being crazy, but show that. Same to you, HS. I want to see you use the heat. I want this game to be dangerous. Yeah, we're, um, we're expecting big things from both, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so. Like, I think this could be a really cool game. Uh, it's hard, but I personally love IP so much. But, so I'm gonna, you know, go with him. I just test with him a lot, that's basically it. I am convinced of him and I feel like he's really good. HS obviously as well. He's also got Rob as a support, which is also crazy, and HS on his own is also like... I feel like he's just got like an interesting take on the meta, and I did like his team a lot last week. And I also oh. think he pulled it because he told me he did. He, he already said like at the beginning of the week he already knows what he's using. I think it was a good team, so... It's definitely gonna be a close one, but like... I could see that, like, if I pee, I don't know, everyone probably saw that he didn't have a lot of time last week due to certain circumstances, so I hope it will get better so that this won't influence the game. Yeah. That's fair. I think I... I would hold uh, IP here. I think IP had, like, a rough week last week, like, in, in the builder and just uh, things going on, but yeah. I think he'll bounce back this week. That's a good opportunity. It'll, it'll be a fun yeah. one to watch for sure, though. I, I'm expecting heat, like you said. I'm from so looking sides. forward to this one, honestly. <laughs> this is just, this is going to be, I feel like this is going to be the highlight of the week. It very well could be. Yeah, I, th I think IP is genuinely in better form, so we'll roll them here. This next one is actually my highlight <laughs> of the week to it, HS. over here. This is my uh, pick for highlight game of the week uh, in L Numbers versus Adam. And I know both of you are involved, so I guess I could say a bit on it. Um, Clark, you're obviously 6-0. You've been uh, prepping well, e even even though some people might just see it as like fishing or whatever. But the fact is you've been prepping well, you've been executing well enough. Um, and Adam's been picking it up these past few weeks. You ran into some unfortunate circumstances versus GXC. But I think his general form is um, undoubtedly um, at like the top when it comes to the UU field. Um, so close one for sure, but just given the way things have been going so far this tournament, I'll give the slightest of edges to, to Clark here. And maybe fuel Adam in the process by doing this. <laughs> and I hope this does fuel you, because I want to see you win too. I'm just going to use Clark for the third time and hope it works out. You know, sometimes it's as simple as just loading Poppy every week, right? Yeah, no counter it, baby. And, and we actually did lose a faster mock resist in Ladia, so... Who knows, it might have just gotten better. I've been looking forward to this one. Oh yeah, it's, I'm expecting big things from both of you, so don't disappoint. And I'm sure, I'm sure this, is gonna be, this is gonna be crazy. For sure, for sure. But I do want to win this a lot. <laughs> like, really, a lot. Yeah, this is one of your tougher matchups over the entire tour, so... Pressure's on you. Playing, man, Adam, but... is, playing Adam is always an experience. It's always, it's always crazy. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And then our last matchup, we have uh, myself versus the Tush. Hey, yeah, I, I, I do like this to. matchup because I know you two are close. Yeah, we got. I do lot. like it. <laughs> We're good friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, so I feel, so I feel like if Bush is gonna try like in one week, like real hard, it might be in this one because like you always want to do well versus your friend. Let's be honest. Yeah, uh, you but like in terms out of the best like, in you. yeah, yeah, like. Copy counts for both sides, but like just in general, I think Axel has been like his record doesn't really say, but like he's been doing like really damn well this tournament. Like, I do like the teams he's been bringing and like the plays he's been making, so I feel like he's just like really at like his peak right now, or like almost at his peak. Like, that game versus Rob was just perfect. So, I do give Axel the edge here. Like, so, sorry. Yeah, Axel, he said. Yeah, they, they keep they keep messing with yeah, the pronunciation. Yeah, Axel, Axel, like, <laughs> yeah, triple Axel, Excelgor, Excelorog. Uh, for, for the record, it's Excelgor, so it's pronounced Excel. But 
You're, no, it's, <laughs> it's pronounced Axel because triple Axel exists. You know what? Eight. You know what? Everyone is welcome to pronounce it, or pr pronounce it <laughs> however they see fit. I said pronounce it. It's not even a word. Shame on me. Uh, but Adam, I guess I could get your take on this too before we seal it. I got my fellow two and four gang member against my brother, so it's a tough choice for me. <laughs> However, if we're being serious, um, Excel has been playing better this tournament overall. Um, I've been help. I've been seeing his prep and uh, myself, and I know he's been putting in the hours. I think he's just gonna do better this week. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, so pressure's on me to win this one and bounce back after last week. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely looking forward to Bush. This is like. He's, he's one of my favorite people to play. It's always an experience, to say the least. But yeah, that's a wrap. All five games done, predicted. Uh, hopefully looking at good games from everybody. Yeah. And we will see the rest of you at the end of week seven. Good luck to everybody here. We will. Bye, everybody. And that's a wrap. Peace out. Bye.